Are you looking for a 50 millimeter f1.8 vintage lens but don't want to throw your money away on a bad one? Well, you've come to the right place because today in an identical shot for shot group test, I'm going to show you four of the very best you can buy so you don't need to spend too much cash. So hey everybody, thanks for checking in once again. And yes, today we are looking at four very nice f1.8 50mm vintage lenses. Well, actually I think one is an f2 55mm, but you know, same sort of thing. Um, they're all from major manufacturers, with the exception of one. I'll tell you which ones we've got. Well, we've got this one. This is the Pentax 55mm f2. I think this is an f2 version. You'll also find these in 1.8 versions, exactly the same lens. The cost is, well, I guess anywhere between, what, 40 to 70 pounds, something like that. Everything seems to have gone up a little bit and this Little Pentax is no exception. So that's one of the lenses we'll be looking at today. This is one of my standard 50mm lenses, one of my go-to 50mm lenses. It's cheap. Um, it's extremely good quality. It gives you a very, very nice image indeed. Uh, for the price, one of the best you can get. Okay, and we've also got... Also got... This lens, this is the Olympus Zuiko 50mm f1.8. Um, these were made in their millions and millions. They were standard kit for the OM cameras, the OM1s, the OM2s. This is a later version said to be uh, slightly nicer than the earlier ones with a serial number, uh, or rather, sorry, um, with the lettering that says made in Japan here, those are said to be slightly nicer. One of the later versions, this is a particularly nice one. It's a lovely, lovely lens. Absolutely one of my favorites. Cost between, again, 40 to 70 pounds, maybe a little bit more if you're not patient and not careful. That's the Olympus. We also have, for your enjoyment and delectation, and further jollification, we have this lens. This is a bit of a wild card. This is the Chinon 50mm f1.9. Chinon, as far as I'm aware, do correct me if I'm wrong, Chinon did not make their own lenses. So this is from an outside manufacturer, I think. I've shot this lens in the past and I've thought it gave a very nice result. Uh, I was very impressed with it. It's cheaper than the rest of the lenses here because it's not a big name brand. These off-brand lenses from the slightly cheaper brands stayed cheap and they're cheap today. So you can buy a lens like this from between 30 to 50 pounds. That's off the top of my head, but somewhat cheaper than the uh, Pentax and the Olympus that we will be looking at today. So there's our wild card. And then finally, we've got one that you would hope would do rather well, but who knows? It's sitting on my A7. And it's the Nikon 50mm Series E lens. I've had this lens for years. It came with a Nikon FM that I bought. In fact, it came with that Nikon FM that I bought that's sitting over there. I've not used it very much. I've used it a few times on film. I've used it a few times on digital. <laughs> See what you think. I mean, it's a big name lens. These are not cheap lenses now. I think a lens like this probably will cost you between 60 to 80 pounds. You might want, you might get one a bit cheaper, but because it's Nikon that name, they go for more money. So this is the more, uh, sorry, I'll say that again. This is the most expensive lens on test here today. Will it do the best? Well, who knows? Let's, let's uh, check out the images and find out. 
I shot four images with each lens. Um, so I've shot the same image four times. And with each lens, I've shot that image once fully open at f1.8 or f2. Then the same shot again at f2.8 and then the same shot again at f5.6. So we're looking how the lenses compare fully open, stop down a little bit and stop down to 5.6, about midway on the aperture range. So I've got the official Xenography computer here. I can fire it up. There we are. There's the official Xenography computer. I will be looking at the images on here. I'll do a reveal at the end. See what you think of the images. See if you can guess which is which. Tell me if you've got one of these lenses and why you like it and why you use it. So without further ado, let's check out those images. So this is a shot of a wall and some foliage and leaves and, and stuff near where I live. We've got lens one to begin with, fully open. So what can we see there? Well, it looks a reasonable sort of image. It's a little bit soft. It's a little bit muddy. It wasn't great light while I was shooting. It was that awful grey diffuse light we get in the UK a lot, but it was fairly consistent. There were a couple of points where the sun came out and altered things, but generally the lighting was consistent. So the lens for lens one, a slightly sludgy sort of result. Let's look at lens two fully open. And that is a really big difference. Wow, what a difference. Contrast is increased. Sharpness is that bit better. There's no doubt about it. Colours seem stronger. There seems just less muddy, grey, sludgy splodge in the shot, if that makes very much sense. It's a nicer, cleaner image. Lens three fully open. OK, I don't think that's quite as sharp as lens two. I may have missed the point of focus. The wall at the back there doesn't seem terribly sharp. But if you look at the tree on the left, you can see that sharp. The bluebells and the leaves also in front of the wall are sharp. Um, the colour and contrast are not as strong as lens two. We can see that very clearly. Let's go on to lens three. Lens three gives us a fairly clean result. It's certainly cleaner than lens one. It's reasonably sharp. I don't think it's quite as sharp as lens two was. No, I really don't think it is quite, though it's not far off. Colours are not as nice, that's for sure. Let's see what happens if we stop these lenses down to f2.8. So for lens one, well, that's a big difference. We've got a much clearer image. The whole sort of muddy, murky feel is gone to a large degree. It's not completely gone, but it is largely gone. And that's a much nicer, much cleaner image. Lens two shows an increase in sharpness and an increase in brightness at the corners and around the edges. A lot of the vignetting is gone, which was present on the original shot. So that shot, shot really has come into its own. That's a very nice shot now. Plenty of sharpness, colour and contrast. A very nice result indeed. Lens 3 has certainly sharpened up a lot. We've got a slight colour shift. It has become a little cooler. And personally, I don't think the colours are quite as nice as those from lens 2. Let's check out lens 4 now. Lens 4 again shows an increase in sharpness and a slight colour shift towards the cooler end of things. It does give a very nice image though, that's a very sharp image, it's got plenty of contrast. It's a likeable image too, it's not an image that kind of puts you off or makes you think, oh that's awful. It's a, it's a nice attractive image that you want to look at, so that's a nice result for lens 4. 
at f2.8. Let's go on to f5.6 now. Well, we can see that lens 1 really has sharpened up. Is it equal in sharpness to the other lenses? Well, lens 2 is slightly sharper. Yes, lens 2 is sharper than lens 1, even at f5.6, although it is not a big difference. Certainly the contrast is nicer and the colours are nicer though, and that is a more pleasing image. Lens 3? Well, lens 3 gives us a very nice image indeed, very similar to lens 2, except there's not quite so much contrast there. It is very sharp though, and the colours are lovely. And lens 4 gives us an equally lovely image too there, very, very nice. Plenty of sharpness, plenty of contrast and nice colours too. So we can see that at f5.6, there's not a great deal of difference in these images. Fully open, yes, they show their character and they show their basic quality and basic design, but stop down to f5.6, I would be hard put in a blind test to tell the difference between them. Okay, next image. Well, this is a close up on some flowers. On lens one, we've got what looks like a reasonably nice image. There's nice soft blur in the background. We've got some nice delicate color. We've got some reasonable sharpness on that central tulip. Let's look at lens two. Right, we can see the difference straight away. Lens two is warmer. I'm not certain if it's any sharper. I think it is slightly sharper. Yeah, I think it is slightly sharper, but there's not a lot in it. Contrast is broadly similar. So I think the main difference there is that the colours have warmed up a bit on lens two. Lens three, very similar to lens two, actually. Similar, comparable sharpness, comparable blur and comparable colours. Not a lot to report. And lens three also gives us a similar story. So it's difficult actually to separate the best image there. Perhaps lens two, but that's a very difficult prize to award. They are all broadly very similar. Stop down at 2.8, is there a difference there? Well, lens one gives us a nice image, a little bit cool, but still a nice image. Plenty of sharpness, some nice colour. Lens 2, I think, is just that little bit sharper. Looking at that central flower there, it's just a little bit sharper. And although this is a matter of taste, the colours, the slightly warmer colours, are more to my personal liking. Lens 3, we've got slightly cooler colours again. Very nice, a sharp image, nice colours, good contrast, broadly similar to what we've seen from the previous two lenses, actually. Lens four, is that better than the previous three? No, I don't think it is. Colours are most comparable to lens two, so two and four seem to be comparable for colours, at least in this shot. And one and three seem to have fairly coolish colours, with one, I think, being just the coolest just by a small margin. So if we now stop those lenses down to f5.6, we can see that lens number one gives us a very nice image indeed. Very sharp, lovely colours. Is that improved on by lens two? No, I don't think it is. Those images are very, very similar. The colours are similar. The blur is similar. Lens two two has slightly different blur. Is it slightly rougher? I'm not sure, but it is broadly similar. Lens three again gives us a very nice image. I think that's the sharpest image yet actually of this shot, although I may be wrong. And lens four again, a very nice image. No complaints with colour, contrast, sharpness or any of the 
visual elements that we can pick. So again, we can see that these lenses are broadly similar, stop down to f5.6, broadly similar at f2.8 this time, but rather different, fully open. Let's go on to the next shot, this little bird box, and we can see some specular highlights, some little points of light in the background there that will allow us to explore and examine the blur that's coming from these lenses. And we can see if any have particularly nice blur or indeed particularly nasty blur. So let's check them out and see. So lens one then. Well, we've got what seems like a reasonably nice shot. We've got some reasonable sharpness. We've got some reasonable colour. It's not particularly intense. Lens one is showing that slightly muddy quality that uh, we noticed, particularly in that first shot. The blur is nice, though. We've got some nice specular highlights. It's not particularly tidy, but it's nice. There's a, you know, big soft area of mushed out colours. That's nice blur. Let's go on to lens two, fully open. And we can see that immediately that's different. There is more contrast. The sharpness is better. There's less chromatic aberration on the left hand side of the tree there. There was only a tiny bit with lens one, but there, there was a bit. And it seems to cope better with the light coming around the side of the tree as well. So a better result for lens two there. Certainly blur is nice. I don't think it's particularly any nicer than lens one, but you know, it's nice enough. Lens three, well, that gives us a nice image. Contrast is lower compared to lens two, but that does appear to be a characteristic of lens three, certainly fully open. Blur is nice. Um, I think perhaps a little more untidy than the two we've looked at so far. If you look at the top left there, there's a little bit of harshness where those bubbles are sort of reverberating with each other. So I don't think that's the best blur we've seen on this shot so far. Lens four gives us a very nice, very crisp image, comparable to lens two, but it's not as sharp. And I don't think the contrast is as strong either. So I certainly think lens two takes that uh, at f1.8. Now let's look at f2.8 for this shot. Immediately we can see that lens one is much cleaner, much nicer, far better contrast, far better sharpness. At the cost of a little blur, but you know, we've still got plenty of blur going on there, a much nicer image. Lens two, the contrast is higher, but there's not a great deal of difference between those two images. Sharpness is comparable. It's better on lens two, as it seems to me. Blur again is nice. Lens three, well, there again, we've got slightly lower contrast, though I do prefer the colours actually in this shot from lens three. I think that's given us the nicest colours so far. And lens four, well, again, lens four gives us a very contrasty, very sharp image with a slightly special quality. If you look on those holly leaves running vertically and they're pretty much in the center of the shot, there are some very nice reflections on there where the light's playing. So that I think is a little bit nicer than what lens two is doing with those reflections. 5.6. Lens one at 5.6, very sharp, very nice. We've lost quite a lot of blur, of course, but that's what happens when you stop down. Very, very nice image indeed, no complaints. Lens two, 
pretty much indistinguishable from lens one, slightly higher contrast, but there's not much in it when you stop down to this point. Lens three, again, comparable to lenses one and two. And lens four, yeah, you guessed it, comparable to the other three lenses, there's not much difference at f5.6 in any of these lenses. So, I reckon lens two's the winner. What do you think? Shall I tell you what they are? Okay, I'll tell you what they are. Right. Lens number one, if you haven't already guessed, was this one. The chin on 50mm f 1.9 so this is the lens that was the least good wide open and that's quite surprising because when i shot this lens on its own without directly comparing it shot for shot you know in identical shots with other lenses i thought it was really nice and it is nice it's just not quite as nice as some of the others certainly wide open which is how i like to shoot for um, you know, a lot of the time, not all the time, but I do like to shoot wide open uh, on certain occasions. So, gosh, yeah, wide open, it seems you get what you pay for. Lens number two, I'll tell you what lens number two was. It's the Olympus 50mm f1.8. This is a clear winner. It's just such a beautiful lens. This particular example is a very, very good one, and I don't think it's had very much use. I think it's had hardly any use over its life. So that might be weighing in its favour, although the other lenses are in very nice condition with no dust, no fungus or anything like that. So they should, in theory, be up to the job. This one, I think, was the clear winner. Lens number three was... You probably guessed this by the focal length. Lens number three was the 55mm from Pentax. A beautiful, delicious lens. Absolutely delightful lens. One of the gems uh, that are around at the moment for a very cheap price. This is a really, really nice lens. I didn't think it quite measured up to lens number two in the purely technical stakes, but in the aesthetic stakes, in general day-to-day -day photography. These are beautiful lenses. And I do love the colours. They've got those delicate colours and they seem to bring out nuances of colour that other lenses just can't. And given that the performance is very nearly that of lens number two, this is a very, very worthy contender for the crown, I would say. So that leaves only lens number four as Pretty obviously, the Nikon Series E 50mm f1.8. I'd expected, I've got to be honest, I had expected this lens to be a little better than it is. I'd expected it to do a little better on these tests than it did. It did hold up extremely well, but it didn't do quite as well as the Olympus. So if you're shooting wide open, if you want a 50 mil vintage F1.8 or F2 to shoot wide open, there's only one choice. Get an Olympus 50 mil F1.8. But what this test does show also is that if you stop your lenses down to F2.8, there's hardly any difference between them. And if you stop your lenses down to f5.6, there's no difference, almost no difference. The only differences are inherent differences due to coatings and type of glass, things which affect colour and the contrast because of light transmission and so on. But to look at in everyday practical viewing of images, shooting at f 5.6 you're not going to notice any difference in any lens you shoot so if you don't want to shoot wide open you can get the cheapest lens that you see assuming it's in good condition and good order if you do want to shoot wide open there is no choice i would suggest if you want the very best image you can get certainly out of these four lenses 
get an Olympus. Many thanks go to subscribers. Many, many thanks to you for your continued support. It's really, really important. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for that support. Also, many, many thanks go to patrons without whom this channel couldn't do what it does. Many, many thanks for your support. It is really appreciated. A heartfelt thanks to everybody who has supported this channel in any way. So that is it from me for now. If you're not doing anything next week at around this time, please do check in for a spot more. Xenography. Cheerio, everybody, for now. See you soon.